Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, as Elizabeth said, this is uh, Irene Walters from Clayton Library. We're part of Houston Public Library. And today I'm going to talk to you about research with the Clayton Library Center for Genealogical Research. Okay, so that you can get a image of me uh, before the end of the talk. That is me. I am a librarian too here in, in at the Clayton Library, which is part of the special collections of Houston Public Library. And at Houston Public Library, our mission statement is that we link people to the world. And our sort of unofficial slogan here at Clayton is that we are linking you to the world of your ancestors. Uh, what Clayton Library is, we're the genealogy or family history section of Houston Public Library. We have a complex of four building, buildings in the Houston Museum District. Uh, we have our main research building and then the Clayton House, which is the reason we, why we're called the Clayton Library. In the 60s, uh, Will Clayton, who helped write the Marshall Plan and was instrumental in the cotton industry here in Houston area, donated his home uh, in the museum district to the library system to be used as a library. And so they moved the genealogy collection out here and we got his house, his guest house and his carriage house. And then uh, years later in 1988, the building just got too small. So they built a new building next door and so now we're a four building complex. Uh, we are among the top 10 genealogy libraries in America, right up there close to Allen County. Um, we, we haven't surpassed them yet. They do have a bigger collection than we do, um, but we're, we're close. Uh, we're one third of Houston Public Library's special collections. There's Clayton Library, Center for Genealogical Research, the HMRC, or Texas Room. It's also called the Houston Metropolitan Research Center. It's the Texas and local history collection. So a lot of times the genealogy and the local history are together with us. They're actually separate collections. Um, because back in the 60s, when they moved the genealogy out here, there was just a little bit too much if they had tried to also move the local history out here, there, it would not have fit in the building. Uh, and then we also have the African American Library at the Gregory School, which was a historic um, African American um, school building here in Houston. This is Clayton Library. On the left is our main building built in 1988. And on the right is the Clayton House. It was a two story, two and a half story with the attic um, mansion built in 1917. What does Clayton Library collect? Well, uh, to be one of the top 10 libraries, we collect material for every state. So it doesn't matter which state you're coming to this talk from or coming to Clayton Library from, we have material for every state. We collect original and compiled records. So we have a ton of microfilm of original records. We have some books that are original uh, records, either images of them or a few that have that are original that have been given to us, and a lot of compiled records um, for every state. We collect at the local, state, and federal record level. Uh, our material is in many formats, uh, book, microfilm, microfiche, microcard, and electronic. Uh, maps, we have a map collection and a uh, family charts collection and a vertical file for family family names. We also collect U.S. historical records from the colonial era all the way up to the 20th century and foreign historical records from pre-colonial times to the 20th century. Um, our biggest foreign country record collections are um, Great Britain, including England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Germany, and Mexico. Uh, 
you can contact us, call, write, or email us your questions. Um, we're at 5300 Caroline Street in Houston. And this information will be on my last slide also. It is also on your handout at the bottom. You can also email us right at our reference email, which is cla.reference at Houston TX for Houston, Texas, no dot between them. A lot of people keep trying to put a dot between them and it won't come through, dot gov. So genealogy research. Here at Clayton, we always ask that you start with yourself and work backwards using like a pedigree chart, fill in what you know, and uh, where your blanks are is where we then turn around and help you fill in uh, with what records we have. You can also use family group sheets for one for each couple and fill in about the, uh, the couple and their children. And why do you actually want to fill out those charts? Well, um, your chart actually acts as a map. It really helps us as the reference staff to see on the map where you're going. And it helps tell you who are the parents uh, and who's the child of the parents. Uh, information about where they're born, married, and died, and when they were born, married, and died, so that we can then see what other records will tie into them. Uh, did they own or rent their land? Information about that can be on some of the charts. Um, did they move, emigrate, or naturalize? So are they starting out in Ireland and coming to America and having children in first child, maybe born 1886. Well, they came to America before that and they were born in Ireland in 1864. So when did they come? What historical events happened in their lifetime? So as you look at your chart, you will see that they were, that they lived through World War One or and or World War II uh, or the Civil War. They lived through land rushes in Oklahoma, uh, epidemics that happened in different places. Um, they were born uh, before, uh, during slavery and um, lived through emancipation and afterward. So these charts help you ask your, these questions. And you want to always start at home when you're doing genealogy. You start with your family and ask them questions. Search for original documents about the family and use a tracking or filing system from the beginning so that your uh, genealogy doesn't end up looking like this room. Your home sources, talk to the family members about events that took place and find the family members that have or has stuff about the family. There's always some. Uh, I have recently found out in my family that my uh, dad's little brother, who happened to be my godfather, had a whole scrapbook of family stuff written by their my mom and, and or my dad and my uncle's mom. And it had all sorts of information. It had pictures of my great grandma and my great grandma's parents in it that I had never seen. So uh, sometimes when they say in the family that somebody doesn't have something or they don't know something, they can either be making up a story to you or they could be hiding it because for some reason everybody thinks the genealogy is just theirs versus everybody's. So sometimes you need to keep asking those questions of the family. What is in the attic, the trunk, the Bible, the drawers of the dressers, uh, between book pages, shoe boxes, safe deposit box? What kind of information can you find? And you want to get copies of documents and photos, um, scanners, taking a picture with your phone, whatever you need to do, um, sending in to the state vital records to get copies of death certificates, birth certificates, marriage certificates, whatever. And also don't forget to write down your oral traditions because if you know an oral tradition, uh, someone, um, you know, your first cousins may not know that particular oral tradition or even your brothers and sisters. And you, you know, bring that all together into the genealogy to bring your ancestors to life. 
the types of records you actually want to look for are your vital records, the birth, marriage, and death. We have a little, uh, we have birth, marriage, and death here at Clayton. We try to collect those for as many places as possible. Uh, census, we have a full collection on microfilm from 1790 through 1930. And then of course the 1940 and 50 uh, in computer databases, but we have the whole thing also uh, in computer databases. We have uh, wills, probate, and guardianship here at Clayton, uh, a lot for Texas, quite a bit for other places, and land records, deeds, grants, and bounty land. So if they got it straight, purchased it by deed, if they were granted the land because of some um, government program that was going on or bounty land that they got as their bounty for having signed up for military service. So all of those can tell you different things about your family. Look for military records. Here at Clayton, we have, on again, on microfilm, a ton of military records, um, ones from the National Archives, and then also ones that are from Texas for the um, uh, Texas um, independence and, and uh, revolution. We also have immigration and naturalization for a lot of places, and that's what you want to look for. To use Houston Public Library and Clayton Library's resources, you want to have a Houston Public Library card. It's called My Link Card, and this is an image of it. It's my, my link to the world. And it is free to all Texas residents. So I saw on those signing in, we had some from Dallas and Austin, San Antonio. It is free to all of you. Anyone else, anybody who doesn't live in Texas can um, pay a fee of $40 for a year um, to get a MyLink card. And you can also sign up online to get one, even if you don't live in Texas, you can sign up online and uh, pay online. And you start at HoustonLibrary.org and click on get a My Link card. And it will then take you to the page you fill in. Uh, other things on the Houston Public Library's website. Uh, to do your genealogy research on our website, you click on research. Then you click on genealogy on the page that comes up. And I will tell you, it. Um, if you've looked at our page before, this might look a little different because they did recently, as in the last two months or so, change the website. But it's still clicking on research because that's what you're doing. And the type of research you're doing is genealogy. It's still research and genealogy. Luckily, we've, after, in the last four versions of the website, we've been able to get them to keep that going, <laughs> research and genealogy. And then once you're in the genealogy page, you choose the resource you want. So such as Ancestry Library Edition, um, Heritage Quest, so forth. And it gets you right in. You can also choose Browse All Databases. On the genealogy page, it does not show every database that we have uh, that is considered a genealogy database. Uh, it shows the top um, basically 10 that we have or so. You click on browse all databases and you will get a page that comes up and the top ones are in a yellow box and below that are the other ones. And I believe we are up to 31 databases that are considered uh, genealogy. And I don't remember if instead of genealogy, if you go down a little farther and click on newspapers, I don't remember how many we have that are newspapers. So when you click on browse all databases, you come here to um, this page and click that browse subjects and you'll see, okay, right there it's saying genealogy 25 instead of 31. It depends on which, which month you're, you're taking your screenshot from. Um, but you have different numbers of databases for different things. There's some that are under the African American history and some that are under uh, biography that will also help you with your genealogy. We try to put them under every category that they can be, uh, that 
they can be under, but they're not always. Um, sometimes we, we miss a few. Uh, so this is what your database is, um, your genealogy databases page looks like with the yellow screen. And then you just go pick those or go below. Searching the databases, what databases do we have? Well, we have subscription databases, uh, some of the largest genealogy databases in the world. And of course, uh, databases have tons of great information, but you must evaluate what you find in them. Remember, it's not all correct uh, because not everything is actually in a database or on the internet. And not everything that's actually in a database is correct and that should be in a database or on the internet is correct. So not everything that you find, just like not everything that you find in a record is correct. Um, this weekend, I actually spoke to a first cousin who's doing the genealogy and she was trying to say that our great grandfather's mother's name was Lydia Bibbins. And I'm like, no, that's his, uh, Bibbins was Lydia's sister. She married a Bibbins. Their last name, their maiden name was Stalker. And I found out when I actually looked at the genealogy that she had sent me on a flash drive that um, Lydia's son, our great grandfather, his record his death certificate, actually, um, his son tried to say that his, that his grandma was Lydia Bibbins. It was like, oh, that's why she says that. No, that's wrong. So, because um, great grandpa wasn't there to say the information that saved that his mom was Lydia Stalker, but he was there to say it on his marriage record. So we have his marriage record saying Stalker. So in Ancestry, of course, you get in and you do um, Ancestry Library Edition is one of our major databases that we use here at Clayton. It's not the only one, but it is the one that we end up starting with quite often. It is an in-house use only, so getting your Houston Public Library card will only help you if you come into one of the 40 branches of Houston Public Library to look at it. It's not restricted just to Clayton, but, um, but it is restricted to in-house use. Uh, Heritage Quest Online is available remotely with your HPL MyLink card, and it is one that we, um, where we have people use it um, mostly for the census records, though there are, uh, is a great city directory collection in there, um, mortality schedules, other parts of the census, Freedmen's Bureau, military, quite a few things in Heritage Quest Online. Fold3 is a mostly military database, though they do have some other uh, interesting things like a Bayland orphan home records, and that is a um, orphanage that was here in the Houston area. It was in Baytown, which is part of it, which is in Harris County, same as Houston Public Library. Um, that it comes, it went into the database before Fold3 went. Uh, mostly military, so it's but it's still in there. Right now, it is not available with your HPL MyLink card, um, either in the library or um, from home, because we're renewing the subscription, and it um, the link has not come back up at right at the moment. But we're hoping any day now that it comes back up. The next database um, Houston Public Library pays for is My Heritage Library Edition. It is available remotely with your HPL MyLink card, and it is one that is um, somewhat like Ancestry with tons of information from all over the place. There is some, inf some information in there that is not in Ancestry. Uh, there are some school yearbooks. Um, that are not in Ancestry. There's also, uh, I know one database that we use uh, within it is the Houston Post newspaper. They have a, an index to the Houston Post that is in there. 
um, that is not available uh, anywhere else. That's one thing that we definitely like in my heritage. But there's a, uh, all sorts of information, and it does pull in information from various uh, websites and that have family tree information, the family trees with um, mygenie.com and family trees in other places, uh, family search and so forth. Find My Past. Find My Past is one that's available in Clayton Library only. Is um, So you actually have to come into Clayton. You do not have to use our computer in Clayton to do it, uh, use it, but you can use it either with um, on our computers or on our Wi-Fi. And that's the same with all of the databases. When you come into Clayton Library, um, you can use all the databases uh, on your own computer with your, with our, as long as you're hooked into our Wi-Fi. And that way you can save records right to your own computer. Um, Find My Past is the majority of the information is um, foreign. Uh, Great Britain, uh, United Kingdom, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, not as much Scotland, but a lot of Irish information that you can find in there um, because it comes out of um, Ireland, actually. But they also have got some great information for American records, such as they um, have Roman Catholic churches in America where they have contacted some different dioceses and um, are digitizing and putting the records in there. And it's a really wonderful database to use. We also have, for those of you who have Houston relatives, um, historic relatives, the Houston Chronicle Historical Archive, uh, they finally, uh, right around 2017, 2018, uh, allowed it to be digitized and put online on Newsbank. And we have the Houston Chronicle Historical Archive, 1901 to 2017. And 1901 is when the Chronicle started. And it is available remotely with your HPL MyLink card so that you can search for an obituary yourself. You don't have to send in for a copy. And if you did want to send in to have a search done for an obituary because you can't find it in the Chronicle and it might have been in the Houston Post, um, those requests actually you go on the Houston Public Library website and, um, or not, sorry, not the Houston Chronicle, Houston Public Library's website and ask, uh, do the ask a librarian, ask a question, because those actually go to the central library downtown because they have the Houston Post and Houston Chronicle on microfilm downtown. Some other resources for more information is our actual programming. Uh, Elizabeth talked at the beginning about um, Allen County's programming. Uh, well, Clayton Library, we also have programs going on um, all year long. Right now, they are completely virtual. Uh, later this year, we'll be back to in-person and we're hoping to have them as hybrid um, talks at some point during that. Um, we'll probably, before they become, uh, instead of them becoming just in person, they will probably become hybrid right off. And you can go on the Houston Public Library website, click events, and then actually search the word genealogy. Don't, don't search for events at Clayton. Um, search the word genealogy and all of our events and all our talks will come up. We are also an affiliate library with Family Search, just like Allen County Public Library is. And so we have thousands and thousands of digitized books. We've been, uh, they've been digitizing here at Clayton since 2008. Uh, I remember it was August of 2008 because it's uh, our heat kind of uh, surprised our first missionary couple. And 
So they've been digitizing away for a long time and we're an affiliate library with FamilySearch, which means that you can come into Clayton Library and we're, when you're using our computers or our Wi-Fi, you can get into those um, records on FamilySearch.org that you um, might not be able to get into from home. Uh, when you're looking at them at home, it'll sometimes show a little camera with a key icon above it. And when you go over that, that icon, it will say that it, it's viewable at, uh, the record's locked and it's viewable at a Family History Library Center or an affiliate library. If it says that about an affiliate library, you can come into Clayton and look at them. You can also contact us um, like through our email reference and we will look and see, you can call us or contact us through email reference. We'll look and see if we can get into those records before you come. Uh, we also have gone into some of those records if you have an index page or something like that, and we've been able to uh, let people know what the things, uh, what it is, and send them either a digital or paper copy of their uh, of the record. We have at Houston Public Library lots of other online sources. Um, we have a huge newspaper um, collection on. Um, of databases that you can look at. Um, we uh, have ethnic databases, the history and Texas um, databases. So don't just click on genealogy, click on the other um, lists of databases and see what else we have. Um, and then don't forget to actually go to actual record repositories because we don't have everything. Family Search doesn't have everything. Allen County doesn't have everything. So sometimes you got to contact the actual record repositories. I told a patron this morning at the reference desk, well, con contact that county clerk's office and see for that, that particular deed record uh, when your ancestor sold his land, see if there's a deed of him selling the land. Uh, also check internet sites. There, there might be something up on the internet that where you don't, it's not available in one of the libraries. And remember, everyone has a story and you, what you need to do is tell your family story before it disappears. If you've been doing genealogy for a long time, try and create some stories um, for your family and pass them on to others. You can use the genealogy software. You can use uh, shared and shareable databases such as the family trees on ancestry.com if you have a subscription. Those trees are um, just shareable. They're not shared with other people. They do not, other people cannot actually change the information you put in your tree on familysearch.org. It is a shared um, family tree where other people can connect records to it and to your ancestors who are also hopefully also their ancestors and sometimes they can connect them wrong and like that. So you need to keep watching it, but uh, it's shared. Sometimes you need to tell the family story in a family newsletter and send that out to your cousins and, and second cousins and so forth. You can share the family story on the internet using a blog or Facebook. Um, I've sort of started some text um, stuff for myself uh, with my family of uh, every so often I'll send my brothers and sisters and a few of my cousins a text saying, oh, on this day in history, this happened. Um, a, a couple of years ago, I sent one that was on, uh, it was July 9th, I remember. Well, I know what our grandparents were doing on this date, July 9th, 1925. They were celebrating the fact that their son was still alive because um, my dad had fallen in the river. He'd climbed out on a tree branch, fallen in the river and almost died, uh, almost drowned. And so I was able to send a text out and then a clipping from the newspaper where I had found what when this happened. And some of the family was like, wait a minute, when did this, where'd you get this from? I, we didn't, we didn't hear this story before. 
So it's always good to share it. You can also create a book or a booklet. And here at Clayton Library, we'll take your books. Uh, if you create a family history book, it doesn't matter what state your ancestors are from, what country, we will add them to the collection. We can't add the three, um, three ring binder things where it's just all of your research, but if you put it together as a story and, or as a book, we will put it in, your, in our collection. And so some final points to ponder. Go ahead and get your library card, get your Houston Public Library card if you live in Texas. If you, if you don't, you can get, remember I said, you can get it for $40 a year and you can get it without ever having to step foot in here. Come and visit us here at Clayton Library virtually or in person. And then check out your local state uh, and or state libraries to see what else there is. And remember to have fun doing your genealogy. So this has been Irene B. Walters. I'm a librarian at Clayton Library Center for Genealogical Research in Houston, Texas. This has been researching with the Clayton Library. And our email, um, our mailing address, phone number, and email address are right there. We are closed every Sunday and Monday but we're open Tuesday through Saturday. And right now it's 10 to five on Tuesday and Wednesday, noon to seven on Thursday and 10 to five on Friday and Saturday. And that's just a little bit less than our pre-COVID hours. It was 10 to six and noon to eight and then 10 to, uh, 10 to six on Friday. Saturday is always five. For some reason, everybody wants to go home at five on Saturday.